tell you uh, how to make uh, AI of today more robust uh, and more trustworthy, and, uh, and why causality is the way to do that. Uh, so there's a, there's a big problem right now with, with machine learning and AI. The, the problem is one of uh, the fact that, that these machines are, are essentially pattern matching engines. They look for patterns in the data and they associate uh, outcomes with, with patterns. Um, but the problem with that is that they mistake correlation for causation. So the fact that a pattern occurs at the same time as an outcome does not imply necessarily that the outcome was caused by that pattern. And uh, that's a challenge that humans have, and it's a challenge that machine learning and AI models have as well. And this can lead to devastating consequences in the real world when you deplo deploy these models. Here are some examples. There are problems having to do with performance of these models, with economic damage, with fairness and, and uh, bias as well. And all of them stem from this fundamental issue of mistaking correlation and causation. Causality is, is, is a causal science, has been around for a, for a long time, and people have investigated this set of problems. And the thing we need to figure out is how to apply this technique to, to machine learning and AI models today. So causal AI models differentiate this notion of cause and effect. They understand this notion. It's built into these models. These models are robust. They are uh, fair. Humans can understand these models. And they provide a way to make decisions, whereas classic machine learning can, uh, can give you some notions of prediction, uh, causal models can answer more questions than that. They can ask interventional questions. If I make a change, what will the outcome be? Or what would have been the outcome had I done something differently? And these are fundamentally very different from purely predictive questions that, that machine learning models uh, and normally answer. So in this talk, I will try to unpack this notion in a, in a somewhat non-technical way uh, and kind of impart you with this idea to look at the world through a, through a different, different lens, right? Uh, but for more insight, you can also read some of the content on our website, as well as a, a absolutely you know, riveting read, which is the book of why by one of the founders of this field. Now, join me in, in learning briefly how to view the world through, through a causal lens. So let's consider an illustrative example. So uh, it's a sort of a silly example, but you'll see in a moment why, why it's illustrative. So let, let's consider the, the relationship between sales of ice cream and, uh, and shark attacks. So it turns out, um, there is a relationship there. There's, a, there's an actual, you know, statistically significant correlation between these things, right, over time. Um, so that's interesting. The, there's a key question here with this correlation, right? What, what does this correlation actually answer, right? It answers um, a question which is, which is sort of statistical in nature. It, it says, look, there is... There is a statistical pattern at play here that these two things tend to coincide, right? Uh, it's, it's essentially answering a question of correlation between these two variables. But you as humans, you understand that the, the really salient question that we wish to know as humans is not whether these two time series have some kind of a statistical pattern between them, you know? That's not, a, that's not really salient here. The salient question you wish to know is, Will eating ice cream cause sharks to bite you, right? Um, and so what, what's gone wrong, right? What, what happened between this 
you know, pattern that we observed and, and this, you know, question we're asking, and how do we actually uh, answer the right question, right? So, uh, and by the way, th this challenge happens all throughout our society. We mistake correlation and causation, you know, all over the place, uh, and even data scientists who build machine learning models make this mistake as well. And this has led to many, many projects in the real world getting, uh, being unsuccessful, you know? A part of that problem is because they try to answer the wrong question or they don't formulate this question correctly. So let's unpack the causal question here. Will I be eaten by a shark if I, uh, if I eat ice cream? So, this is the only formula in this talk. It's an attempt to kind of formulate this in a, in a mathematical way, right? The, this, this question of whether I'll be eaten by, well, bitten by a shark can be repressed, uh, represented like this, right? So we have a probability of getting bitten by a shark if I eat ice cream, minus probability of being bitten by a shark if I don't, right? And you can see here that there is a problem between these two statements. The fact that I either eat the ice cream or I don't, right? So there is one world in which, suppose I eat the ice cream, right? That's the factual world. That's the reality. But you can imagine that there is a sort of a, an alternate universe, which we call counterfactual world, where I don't eat the ice cream. And this, this formula here, is essentially telling you the answer that I wish to know. You know, this is, the, this is a salient question, remember. Will I get beaten by a shark if I eat ice cream? Well, the only way to answer that question is to take the difference between the factual world, the true world, and the counterfactual world, which is a sort of imaginative world. And this is what makes this a causal question, not a statistical question, and this is why a typical machine learning model that purely builds uh, a kind of a pattern matching engine will never be able to answer this question because it is not able, because this is a causal question. It, it kind of looks at something that is not present in the data. That's the imagination, the counterfactual bit. And this is why we need to take into account causality and embed and, and completely rethink the way we build a lot of these models. Um, so how do we do it? Well, in causal mo uh, modeling, we build something called a causal graph. And this graph is kind of the, the brain of the entire AI. So if we as humans start to draw the graph for this problem, we come up with something like this. You can see here that really you know, temperature is a, is a kind of a factor that drives the number of people that go to beaches, which then drives the number of uh, ice cream sales. And I'm sorry that for some reason the, there's an edge missing. Not sure how that happened. But the number of beach goers drives the number of shark attacks. Uh, sorry, not sure how that's not visible there. So now you can see that actually the uh, the the, you know, the root cause here is, is driven by the number of beach goers, and there is a sort of a spurious correlation that forms between the shark attacks and ice cream sales, but it's spurious. The action of, say, you know, eating more ice cream is not going to cause sharks to, to attack you more. So, turns out, most questions that we ask, ask in the real world are actually causal questions. They are not statistical questions. We don't care as much about patterns. What we care about are, are you know, actions we can take upon these patterns. So for instance, you know, we want to know, should a patient take a certain drug? A patient only can, can make that decision once. You can either take the drug or not take the drug. You can't do both, right? And so this is clearly a causal question that, that is very nuanced to answer, right? Will, uh, did taking the drug cure the patient, right? That's a sort of a uh, so-called uh, counterfactual question, right? Did this, you know, did, what, what was the reason why 
a patient got cured, right? How, how to figure out a, a root cause of a certain inefficiency. Those are all examples of causal questions. And my claim is that actually, if we sit, sit down and think about it a little bit, most questions we actually care about are, are causal. So what is causal AI? Well, it is the kind of opposite of the traditional machine learning models of today, which are kind of like black boxes. This here is showing you something which we call a correlation matrix, which is a, you know, a bunch of numbers correlating various patterns, various features, and, and, and outcomes. That's what most machine learning models are today. They are basically a bunch of correlations, a bunch of patterns. In comparison, causal AI models are these causal graphs that are uh, they kind of, you know, sort of succinctly explain the mechanism behind what's going on in, in nature. In this case, what's going on on a, on a beach, right? And so causal AI essentially, you know, answers, you know, is, is a science where we look at how we figure out, A, what those graphs are. We call that causal discovery. So we try to build those graphs automatically from data or with human domain knowledge as well. Secondly, we figure out how to actually estimate these models accurately so we know what is the effect of, you know, giving a drug to a patient. That's called causal inference. Uh, and then finally, we use various decision systems on top of these models to answer complex questions, such as what is the root cause of this, inter of, of this event? You know, why did this event happen? Why did this machine break down or, or whatever? Uh, or, for instance, what, uh, what will happen if I make a certain intervention? Or what set of interventions should I make in order to make something, some kind of an objective uh, achieved, right? What about generative AI? Large language model, things like that. Well, they're kind of like the mother of all machine learning models, right? They're massive. You know, this is a kind of a understatement, you know, visually there are these big, big, big matrices of even many, many more patterns, right? The, you know, today, as, as of today, right, generative AI models have hundreds of billions of parameters going into trillions, and they're trained on trillions of data points. So they are, uh, they are, they are you, know, the, you know, incredibly powerful statistically, you know, pattern matching machines, but they don't necessarily, as of today, understand causality. And uh, they can sometimes, uh, there's this statement, that, you know, of causal parrots. They can make statements that look like they understand causality, but, but they don't really. They're just sort of parroting those statements. In other words, they found patterns that, um, that are correlated to, to actual causal statements which they, which they make, right? But they don't truly really understand them. And in fact, it, it will be very hard for large language models from purely observational data to learn you know, causality. But there, there are ways in which we can connect generative AI models with, with causality. You can ground them by answering questions, uh, you know, for instance, in case of large language models, using these causal models. So you can, you know, build causal models into generative AI models. So for instance, you can query a library of causal artifacts, compute certain things using uh, a causal you know, AI methodology, and then use large language models to sort of answer questions based on those computations. That is, uh, that is one way to do it. So the causal AI revolution is taking place now. Uh, you know, it's one of the, the kind of hyped technologies in the Gartner cycle. A Nobel Prize was just awarded in 2021 on some of the discoveries in causal uh, analysis. One, you know, godfathers of AI appreciate the need for causality in, in, uh, in building the, the future of machine learning. And in the words of Judea Pearl, who is one of the Turing Award winners, to build truly intelligent machines, you need to teach them cause and effect. You can learn more about causality uh, on our website. Thank you.